How you doing? I'm Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and in this video I am going to share with you some of my secrets, uh, scent elimination techniques that I use. What I have found to be the most effective way to eliminate odor from your clothes or even from your body. I'm going to talk about all that because I get a lot of questions on that and I'm going to be mentioning names of products. These products do not sponsor me. I'm not saying these are the only products you can use. Um, they're just what I am currently using and I may change in the future, it all depends. Um, but here's one thing I do ask and if you watch my videos you'll find out that I try to be very unbiased in my presentation with products and things like that. It's hard to find that out there in the industry because most people are being paid by these manufacturers to promote their products and so they're a little bit biased in their presentation. You're not going to find that in this video. But this is, this is something I'm going to ask you. If you find this information helpful, I'm asking you please to just donate one dollar. Just one dollar, there'll be a little icon that you can click on to do that or on my page. Just one. Let me start off by saying I have tried pretty much every product that's out there on the market for scent elimination. Every type of soap that there is. In my honest opinion, None of them work very well for your washing your clothes. I mean, I should say they don't work any better or any different than regular detergent. You know me, I have three little kids and the fourth one's on the way. So when you have little kids, they recommend that you use scent-free and dye-free soaps in case they're allergic to a scent or a dye. Well, I always use these anyway because of hunting, but this is an example. Here is all... Here's Tide, and these are just a little little capsule thing you throw in the washing machine that does the same thing as regular detergent. But the key is these are scent-free and dye-free. You'll see it right on here, scent-free, dye-free. Another thing these hunting-related soaps are going to try to sell us on is UV blockers or UV inhibitors. They'll say that um, our clothes in the early morning and the late in the day when it's just getting light or light is just about to end, they'll kind of have a glowing look to animals because of ultraviolet rays. Now, I've been hunting a long time, even turkey hunting, and I've never spooked one in the low light, even just using regular soap. So, you know, I don't know. My own personal experience is the UV thing isn't really a factor. However, if that's a concern to you, just buy uh, any of the brands of soap that are out there. There's only one brand that I've used that I really don't like at all, and that is the, um, at least currently, the Primus brand, the, the Control Freak. Like this whole line of products, I don't like them. Aside from that, I'll use any soap. Dead Downwind, Scent Killer, Scent Bach, whatever, whatever the brand is. Uh, typically, as long as there's no odor to it, I'll use it. With that said, there are some brands that have an odor to them, like Forest Blend. I mean, it's not, it's not a game killer for me. I'll use it if I have to, but I typically prefer to have clothes with no odor at all. Okay, so that's a basic rundown on my take of soaps for using in, you know, deodorizing your clothes. But this, what I'm about to show you, is really the most helpful and effective thing that I've ever used so far in my life. I've experimented with a lot of things, and I am actually running some experiments right now through the winter time and you know if they prove useful and successful I'll maybe make another video explaining those next year but I'm like I said I want to give it time to test it to make sure that it works or not before I go telling people about it but anyway this is something I've personally used and tested and I found it to be the most effective and this stuff is called OxyClean and the, the again the key is to get the free of dye and perfume. So it says no dye, no perfume. They do make this with different types of odors. You don't want that. But basically this stuff is an additive. It's a granular powder. And I mean, when I first started using it and found it to be successful, I thought, wow, you know, like we could totally repackage this, you know, buy in bulk and repackage it and sell it in the hunting industry or even just try to contact the manufacturers and say, hey, there's a market for you in the uh, hunting industry if you want to help, want me to help you uh, get it there. Uh, but anyway, I, rather than do all that, here I am telling you. So basically what I'll do is I'll 
get the washing load started and have it fill up about halfway. So what I do typically is I set it on the largest load setting. A lot of times I'll just leave it on cold. Sometimes I'll bump it up to warm if I'm going to soak it overnight, which is what I often do. But you can just leave it there, normal. Uh, I typically leave it on normal. Sometimes, you know, if you really need it to scrub it good, you can put it on heavy. And um, typically I'll do, it depends on the situation, but I'll do like a two rinse cycle, especially if I want to incorporate the vinegar. I'll typically just put a normal dosage amount of the soap in for a large load. And what I like to do is fill the cup with the water and dilute it right away so that it really gets in the water well. We're going to scoop it the OxyClean. And I'll just sprinkle it around in here. Once I get about almost half with the water in here. And then I'll actually stir it around. I'm going to put the camera around and do it, but I pull my sleeve up and I stir it around in there to really get it mixed in. Typically, since I'm about to wash these clothes, I'll just take, well, here's my uh, Sean's Outdoor Adventures hat, and I'll just dry my arm off with piece of clothing that I'm about to put in the load. Now that it's about half full, I can even just start piling my clothes in. Now I have a hand muff. I, I have it turned inside out because I want to wash it this way. The reason is, the last time I used it, when I took my hands out to like get my bow or turn on the video camera, I noticed that my hand really smelled. It's because even though I washed this, water and air and anything like that wasn't really getting in the inside very well. And so an odor developed over time. And um, so you want to keep that in mind. If you use something like this, you might need to turn it inside out once in a while to do the washing. And um, I'm just going to clip this closed and stick it in there so it doesn't get caught on the oscillator in the washing machine. If you have a jacket you're particularly concerned about, um, turn it inside out, you know, if you don't want it to get all messed up. Like this is a jacket, I'll turn it inside out and zip it up so that it doesn't, um, the exterior of it doesn't get ruined. That'll also help kind of um, reduce the amount of fading on something like this when you have an oscillator in, in your washing machine. A lot of washing machines now these days don't have them, but if you read reviews on them, at least right now, they typically don't clean your clothes as well as one that has an oscillator, which is why I bought one that has one. So you can do that. Also make sure that you're washing your towel that you use for after taking a shower, because you know if you wash, if you use a towel that has like a regular perfumey smell from, you know, other, if your modes of wash, you know, the dryer sheets, whatever, have an odor, then you're basically rubbing that odor all over yourself after taking a scent elimination shower. So I like to actually do my towels in a separate load. As you'll see, I use a white towel. Um, typically what I'll do is I'll buy two white towels every, the beginning of every hunting season, and they are used just for my hunting eliminate, scent elimination showers. And I use white because you can bleach these and even if the, the smell of bleach is on a towel, bleach is a smell that off gases, and so it's an odor that goes away. Whereas, you know, the odors that you can get from like dryer sheets, they're sort of, they can sometimes be oil based, and so they don't off gas because that oil will stay on your skin and that odor with it. So, um, white towels, separate load, I like to bleach them, so speaking of that, I'm going to set this aside, but I wanted to just pull that out to show you that as an example. Let's finish loading this up. Okay, so I'll get it to the point where it starts doing the wash load. It's jiggling everything around, um, working everything in, and I'll let it do that for just a couple minutes and then I'll just pause it. 
And you'll have to check how your model works. Mine, I just simply hit this button and I'll actually let it sit like that overnight. Come back tomorrow, turn it back on, let it go through the rest of the wash part of the load. And I like to typically hang out. You now I have a lot of projects I can do in my, this is my basement. I also have an archery range set up in my basement. So I might, you know, practice archery while I'm waiting. But then when it gets to the rinse load, I'll take um, regular vinegar I'm going to keep a measuring cup right on hand and I'll put one to two cups of vinegar in the rinse load. I'll wait till the water is filled up and then I'll open the lid, put one to two cups in and I'll let that go through the rinse load. I don't do the vinegar every single time. I can't verify if it actually helps a whole lot or not, but um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've read suggests vinegar. Perhaps it makes an unfavorable environment for bacteria and a lot of times where your odors are coming from are different types of bacteria. With that said, if you have an underlayer like a t-shirt or um, you know thermal underwear that's right up against your skin and you've done a lot of sweating, a big walk in and walk out, even before you put your clothes in the wash, take some detergent directly, turn the shirt inside out, put the detergent directly on the armpit area, and scrub it right on there with like a brush of some type. Get a little plastic bristled brush and scrub it because the bacteria can stay in the shirt in that area and the next time it gets wet they can be reactivated and that's where your odor comes from. So this tip right here, this is worth the, the weight in gold. I mean this is, this is what has helped me more than anything else. Now I've had my laundry sitting overnight um, and what I'll typically do is I'll open the lid and I'll make sure everything's pushed down because sometimes it floats up. I'll push down and then I'll get the laundry load started. I'll just hit the start button. So my laundry right now has sat overnight. Here, let me just take the camera off and I will give you a peek of what we're looking at here. So here we have it. Um, and so I'll you know push it down in. Close the lid. Yes, my laundry, my washing machine needs to be cleaned up, it's dirty. I'll do that later. Now there are times where I'll smell my clothes after washing them with any of these types of soaps, whether it's Dead Down Wind, Scent Killer, one of these that I have here. Um, you know, they might have a little bit of odor even coming out of the washing machine. And the key is to use what I, dryer sheets, you know, and the brand doesn't really even matter to me. There's Again, Dead Down Wind, Scent Killer, all these different brands have their own dryer sheets. As long as you use one, I think it makes a huge difference. And what I do is I reuse them. I don't use them once and chuck them. So I'll keep about four or five on hand that look the freshest. And then what I'll do is, so here's one. This is like Scent Killer brand or Scent, yeah, I think this one's Scent Killer. This one's a little bit old though, so I probably won't reuse this one. But as an example... When the, when the dryer load is done, I'll take this out and I'll set it aside. The next time I'm going to put a dryer a load in the dryer, I'll take this. You know, if I have like three or four of them, I'll throw them in and then I'll throw one brand new one in. And that way I'm getting every ounce of use out of these. And having more of these in there is going to help you know, deodorize your clothes in the drying process. And so these are, these are old dead down wind ones. Um, I have about five here. What I will do is I'll take um, any kind of scent killer spray and I'll actually spray the dead down wind ones before putting them back in. And when you take these out of the packaging, it, it's, they're a little bit damp with their, just the dead down wind product. So I just refreshen up the dampness and I throw them back in um, with, with that. So when you're doing yours, make sure you save the freshest ones, like save about four or five and then just kind of keep rotating them and the ones that start to really look old and ratty, throw them out. I mean, there's times I've done a dryer load with like eight or nine dryer sheets. I just keep throwing them in. One other thing I'll note, it, I'll note here is uh, the dead down wind ones seem to really stick to fleece. If you have a lot of fleece in your hunting inventory, I would say maybe use more. These still will stick to things, but not as bad to fleece as the dead down wind ones do. So like if you have one fleece shirt, all of your dryer sheets are going to be stuck to it and that doesn't you know always help you get a good coverage in all of the laundry so 
Um, you can even mix it up with both, and that's what I often do. Now when it comes to taking your clothes out of the dryer and putting them into a bag or a scent safe container, I want to talk about that. I used to use this, you know, super scent safe, what's it say on here? Deluxe scent free travel bag. You know, and I put my clothes in here and um, zip it up and try to keep them odor free till I get to my hunting spot, take it out and put them on. But what I found is the bag, create, you know, over time an odor got um, present in the bag and you're supposed to be able to wash the bags, turn it inside out, wash it several times and it still didn't get rid of the odor. So I actually stopped using these as my primary um, container. Here's what I started doing. I, I went, I got these at like Walmart. These are Ziploc storage bags and it doesn't give you good information on the box as far as what you're getting, like how big are these, these storage bags. What I typically do is I'll get the extra large, there's six in here, and two of these will last me one or two hunting seasons. So this box will last me a good possible three or four hunting seasons. And these really large bags that are in here have a little port so you can push all the air out. And that really helps when you're doing long range traveling because you need as much space in your vehicle a lot of times as you can get. And having your clothes compressed down just gives you extra space for travel. So what I'll do is I'll put my clothes in here, compress it down, and then I'll put maybe one if I can fit two. I'll put these inside this bag just for carrying. So this bag isn't really helping me with the odor control in a certain sense, but it's helping me carry these which are. I like my clothes being directly in plastic because these don't carry an odor. I've tried every kind of bin, tub, plastic, rubber, all that stuff, and all of them seem to carry an odor. If you have a bin that you put your hunting clothes in, smell the bin. If you smell anything at all, that smell can get onto your hunting clothes and you just undid what you did in the washing machine. Now when you get to the field, they have all these you know, all these different kinds of scent elimination sprays on the market. I've tried them all, like I said. I mean, I literally have tried them all. And there's, there isn't one that I'm particularly fond of. I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, two years ago, I got hooked up with a sort of chemist guy and worked with him on creating a completely odor-free formula. Like, one of the problems I have with all of these is when you spray them, I smell something. I don't want to smell anything. I want to be invisible to the deer. And if I smell something, that means the deer can smell something. So all of these create some form of odor, which I don't like. So I worked with this chemist and he came up with a formula for me. And as you'll notice, all of these containers are opaque. You cannot see through them. And that's because a lot of these are salt-based um, solutions that are sensitive to light. And this, the, this chemist came up with something for me, which is also sensitive to light. And I don't have like a set-aside bottle for it. But right over here, I have a t-shirt over this bottle. This is simply distilled water that I bought at the store for 88 cents. And then I poured like 8 ounces of what he came up with for me in here. And to be honest, I, I haven't really told many people this. That's what I've been using for the most part over the last two years. And I, I just took camouflage tape and I taped it in this bottle. And this is what I carry into the field with me. When I'm in the stand, you know, within an hour or two, just from being outside, your clothes begin to take on an odor. And I'll throw this in real quick. A lot of people take their clothes out of the washer and they hang them outside to air dry. Your clothes begin to take on odors from the outside when you do that. So if you walk up to your clothes and you smell something, it's no good. You don't want to smell anything at all. And so within an hour or two being outside, they're going to, it, odors are going to begin to bond to the material in your clothing. And then it's going to take on a, a derivative odor of what's naturally out there. And that's what the deer smell. 
more so than your own human odor, like your armpit odor or whatever, because we, we you know we use all these other products to you know put under our armpits, you know, you know, antiperspirant and all that stuff. You take our scent elimination shower, so it's not human odor we're so much need to combat. It's our clothing odor, and you don't hear that preached out there because I don't I don't know, like I don't wear any of the scent blocker material suits because. I find that over time, those begin to create their own odor that you can't get rid of, and I don't want to smell like anything. So I don't buy those anymore because it's not my human odor I'm worried about because I do all that, and I even carry a stick of the deodorant with me. If I do a long hike in and I'm all sweaty, I'll take my shirt off, put it in a Ziploc bag, I'll dry myself down with a dry area of the shirt before I do that, and then I actually carry a stick of antiperspirant and I'll, I'll redo it before climbing in the stand. So, and I don't smell, I don't have human odor. I'm sorry that I'm talking so much right here, but here's another secret that I've only told a few people. All right, sorry, my heater kicked on there. I'm in the basement, so I paused it so it didn't mess up the audio too bad. So let me pick up with what I was just saying. So this one secret that I have only shared with a few people is that, you know, our human body odor typically comes from bacteria like our sweat doesn't have an odor it's actually bacteria that lives in the hair like in our armpits it's bacteria that lives in the hair that has an odor and so what I do is I take a beard trimmer you know that you know little ones and I'll I'll just buzz off my armpit hair in the beginning of the season you know especially because that's when it's hottest and you sweat the most and um, that majorly cuts down on your body odor once you get all sweaty so anyway, that's something that you can incorporate if you want. Just be careful that you don't nick yourself and cut yourself. You know, that's why I use a, instead of a razor blade, I just use a beard trimmer. And it takes it really close. You can get it really close and then, um, like mine, it, it looks like a miniature hair trimmer thing. It's just, uh, but you could use like a, you know, a razor, you know, one of those electric razors to get it all the way down to the skin if you want, but I would use something like that rather than a razor blade because you don't want to risk accidentally cutting yourself, especially going into hunting season, and then now you want to apply your antiperspirant over that and it's getting in the cut, and now you're in the tree stand, you're moving around, you don't want that bothering you. So that's why I use those types of products. You could also use like Nair, uh, which is like typically women use it to make their hair dissolve. So I don't know if you be careful, make sure if you're not allergic to it or whatever, you can experiment. But that's another thing. It just actually kind of melts your hair off. Just, you know, read all the precautions before you try using that and check with your doctor. The point is, though, to really keep your bo human body odor down, you get rid of that bacteria which lives in the hair. And that is a huge, huge help. And so now we're not as worried about our, our human body odor, but we're worried about the odor that gets on our clothing. Getting back to our scent elimination sprays, that's where this comes into play. I will typically carry one of these into the woods with me, especially on a crucial hunt. I won't do it on every hunt, but if there's a hunt where I know there's a really good buck and I want to have a crack at him and the wind can potentially swirl in that area, uh, I want to give myself an extra edge. So about an hour into the hunt, I'll periodically smell my clothes, see when they start taking on that outdoor odor. And then I'll take out my scent elimination spray and I'll spray myself down, my whole body. And what I have found, and you can observe this for yourself, even like products like this that claim that it keeps on working for 10 days after being sprayed on there, I find that within about 20 minutes after this stuff is dry, any, any scent elimination spray is dry, you begin to smell your clothing again. And we don't want that. So I will reapply after, you know, a half hour to an hour goes by, I'll take it out and reapply it. And you gotta be careful, you can't move fast, you know, because if an animal's coming, the more motion you have, the more they're gonna possibly see you. So I'll just kind of spray myself down, try to minimize my motion, get my back, get my, my backpack that's hanging on a tree. And that's another thing. I've washed my clothes here, but I didn't include my backpack. Um, I do that every couple washes, but I don't do it every single one. You got to keep an eye on your backpack because if you do all your clothes, but your backpack smells because you never wash that, then it doesn't matter if your clothes don't smell because the deer are going to smell your backpack. Now, one of the reasons why I looked into, you know, maybe creating my own product is because I wanted to be able to do it in volume because you want to be able to reapply it. Um, I wanted to find something that was economical 
it, like you can mix a gallon at a time and have like I could use a whole bottle of this on an all day hunt, come home and refill it back up and without totally draining my wallet. You know, and I'm a one man show. I'm out hunting and hunting season. I don't have anybody to be shipping stuff. That's why I never moved ahead with putting this on the market. If I ever do, I'll put information below this video. But, um, you know, you can use one of these other products to substitute for that in the meantime. Even if you just find the cheapest one, like this. I bought this, it was on sale, um, $5 off. So I bought two of them, you know, when I did buy it. And you can do that. You can wait till you see them on sale and buy a couple. And that way it'll help you, you know, just get the biggest quantities that you can at the lowest price. And that way you can use it more often. And that's really what I have found to be the best ways to keep your scent um, eliminated. Now there are some people who put like pine branches and things like that in with their clothing when they store them. And that's fine as long as the pine odor itself is the dominant odor. That pine odor though can break down to the point where it smells more like that derivative with clothing. And that's where you're going to start running into problems. There's also those dirt wafer things that they sell on the market. The, I've tried them. I can't say that um, I've had more. I've actually haven't shot a deer while using them yet, but I have used them. And typically it's, you know, I have the most success regardless when I have the wind in my favor, you know. So that's something to keep in mind. You could have great products uh, that help to a degree, but ultimately you want to play the wind. Um, one other thing I want to mention here before I start bringing this video to a close is what I like to do when I take my clothes out of the dryer, I actually prefer to not put them right into the plastic bag because if there is any type of odor in there, it gets trapped. And then when you go to take all your clothes out, they don't have that scent-free smell anymore, or no smell, I should say. And so what I do is I've designated a closet. I've actually built a room in my basement that I keep very dehumidified. If you ever you know, going to put things in your basement, especially if you live in the, the East Coast where there's a lot of humidity. You want to make sure that you run a dehumidifier because humidity in the air can become um, what mold needs to be able to grow. And you could actually have mold begin to grow in your clothing. And smelling like clothing with mold is not a good combination either. So anyway, I have a closet in my basement area that I keep very dehumidified. And it's an isolated closet, so there's no odor that can cling really to my clothing. It's an odor-free closet. And I hang my clothes in that closet. Right now, the bulk of my clothes are in the wash because I just came back from a trip. But when these are done, I'm going to take them out and hang them in there. And just having that air, they kind of air out in that closet with no other things bonding to them, uh, I find that that's the best way to keep them scent-free. Then when I'm ready to go out on a hunt, I'll take them off the hanger, put them in my bag for transportation, and you know, com you know, compress that bag down, get to my hunt spot, take them out of that bag, put them on, and head into the woods. I'll also say this while I'm in the closet here. Um, you know, Ozonix is a product that's on the market right now that you know is promoted for scent killing and scent elimination. I've tried those types of products and I don't like them personally. Ozon, Ozonix, it's a, O3 is a molecule. It's three oxygens and what happens is it's unstable and one of those three oxygens breaks off and binds to something else. Typically you'd like to think it binds to an odor and helps to destroy that odor. But I, you know, in my use of it, um, it creates a very, my, my clothes, I did the Ozonix treatment to them and my clothes just smelled so bad that I couldn't eat. I was like, I'm not even going to go in the woods because I don't want to smell like anything. And they, they smelled awful. Like, it was a very strong smell. So, I mean, I to be honest, like, I didn't particularly like it. And I'm not a fan of it. Um, but that's just me. I mean, some people might use it and say, oh, it works great for me. But I, I can't, I'm not in the tree stand with them or in the ground blind with them to be able to say, well, hey, you know, you shot a deer, but it's because the wind wasn't blowing toward the deer, so it didn't smell all this ozonics stuff going on here. So, you know, um, O3 can help to help to destroy odors that we smell, but that doesn't mean they don't create odors as well. And so that's, that's where the whole thing breaks down. And originally those 
the O3 was used when you had really bad odors. Like, you know, in farms they use them for some of the urine and, and manure smells. But that doesn't mean you don't have a different smell left over. So when you, when you try to use it in hunting, it doesn't mean you don't smell like anything at all, which is really, I think, what we want. I don't want a deer to even have a clue that I'm there. And the only way for that to happen is I, if I don't smell like anything in most situations. Well, I want to throw this in too. When it comes to the soaps that we use for scent elimination showers, um, I, I've used all different ones. I kind of prefer the bar of soap rather than the liquid. And um, when it comes to deodorant, I will say this. And this, you know, again, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I personally have found out of the ones, the main ones that are on the market, Dead Down Wind Antiperspirant works better than the other ones. So I use Dead Down Wind. And I usually have one stick in the bathroom and one stick in my backpack for when I'm in the woods. So that's it. That's some of the things that I find work the best for me. And you can take what you want out of this video. Again, if, if you have benefited in any way, I ask you to consider just donating $1. I mean, to be perfectly honest, when I discovered how helpful using the Oxy stuff was in my... <laughs> you know, soak in my clothes overnight with this and how much better my clothes were coming out. I thought, man, you know, I could buy this in bulk and put these granules in a different container and relabel it and, you know, sell it as, you know, some special scent elimination thing. You know, obviously I could have done that, but I didn't, you know, because that would have ended up costing you more than if I just told you, hey, this is the secret right here. This is what helps my clothes eliminate in the wash process better than anything else better than anything even that the hunting industry provides so if you want to give me a tip like a dollar tip i'm asking you to do that to help support my channel you know i've got a growing family and that helps them too so one dollar if you ever see a video of mine that has really helped you just i mean you these days it's like a dollar to buy a candy bar you know what i mean so it's not much but if if some of you will do that, then hopefully it will add up over time. So please consider doing that. You know, I give all this information away for free and I try to help people. So please return a favor. Help me out a little bit. Donate a dollar. And good luck out there hunting. That's what this is all about. Trying to help people be more effective when they're out there in the woods. Until next time, until next video, take care and God bless.